Welcome to another episode of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies. In this series, I'm sharing my trip to the UK in which in July 2019, I spent two days in London, England, and two days traveling around Scotland, visiting distilleries, visiting some ancient ruins, and meeting up with a couple fellow whiskey tubers. So my first day in Scotland, I went to uh, Glasgow, met up with Roy, Marco Vite, and we visited Andale Distillery, and then I headed west to Androssan, took the ferry over to the Kintyre Peninsula, and went to Campbellton and visited three distilleries there. I stayed at the Stonefield Castle, then head back east to go to the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. However, uh, before I went back to Edinburgh, I made a stop on the Isle of Arran. Now, to go from Stonefield Castle over to the Isle of Arran, you gotta go through a, uh, the countryside of the Kentire Peninsula, go up some over a hill. Um, it is a one lane road, very, very, very narrow. There's only room for one car going in either direction. In other words, if you're going down the road and someone else is coming the other direction, you're going to run into each other, which means every once in a while, they have a little bit of a pull out spot where you pull over to let someone go by. <laughs> it is quite real. See some cows, you see some sheep, you don't see a whole lot of people, you don't see a whole lot of traffic. So, and there's no gas stations or anything like that. So if you haven't got a full tank of gas, when you're heading over there, you're going to be stuck out there. Good luck. Uh, perhaps some farmer will come out and find you. And good luck having any uh, internet connection or cell phone connection. You are out in the boonies. So, uh, on this very narrow road with a few blind curves along the way, I uh, saw maybe one or two cars pass me by. I made my way down to where the ferry stops. Now, the ferry that took me from Andrasen to uh, Campbellton, also, or the ferry that took me over to Ida the year before was almost like a like a miniature cruise ship. They have a nice kitchen, they have nice food, they have a little gift shop, they got a bar, they got a lounge area, they have you know real nice observation deck. Well, this one's really, 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 really small. You know, it didn't have any of that. In fact, there wasn't even a place to pay for the ticket. So if you didn't have um, a return trip ticket, which I had coming from Andrasen, then you're gonna have to pay for one when you get onto the ferry. There's just enough room for a few cars to take you over to the island, which is quite a scenic trip. So it's uh, July 9th, summertime in Scotland, I'm on the ferry uh, going from the Kintyre Peninsula over to Arran. As you can probably guess, it is a bit foggy and rainy. And what you see behind me, that is Aaron, covered in fog. So, uh, sure, I'd rather it be nice and sunny, get some pretty pictures, but I am getting a real taste of Scotland uh, on this trip and uh, kind of enjoying the adventure. Um, I'd rather have a rainy day in Scotland than a smoky, fiery day in California. And it put me, puts me more in the mood uh, for having a little bit of whiskey which I shall do when I visit the other side, visit uh, Aaron Distillery and Lag Distillery, a new distillery. We'll see how that goes. All right, cheers. Now, on the Isle of Arran, there are only two distilleries, one on the north, one in the south, and they're both owned by the same company, the Isle of Arran Distillery in La Cranza and Lag Distillery on the south end of the island. So, before I went to the, um, the first distillery, before I went to Isle of Arran Distillery, I made a stop at a, a ruin of a castle, La Cranza Castle. This is Eric Waite. And I'm right down the road from Isle of Arran Distillery at Loch Ranza Castle, built in the 13th century, and I'll show you around.
So when you're going to um, Scotland, there is more to see there than just distilleries. There's more to do there than just taste whiskeys. I highly, highly recommend, if you're a whiskey enthusiast, definitely go to Scotland. But before you go, prepare your trip. Do a little bit of research as to where you're going to go and other things to see. Yeah, I know people want to go there and play golf. But see some castles, see some old ruins, uh, see some standing stones like I saw on the Isle of Orkney, which I'll get to in a later uh, video. On the Isle of Arran, the Lacranza Castle is a step back in history, going all the way back to the 13th century, although what, a lot of what is there now, what remains in the ruins, is from the 16th century. Now, right down the road, about a mile down the road, is the Isle of Arran Distillery. They have a really nice cafe. I really love it when a distillery has a cafe because you know, you can get there early before you do your tour, have a bite to eat, or perhaps if you've had a little bit to drink, you can get to a bite to eat before you hit the road. And I've really been surprised by the quality of the food at these uh, cafes. And, you know, in terms of the people, you know, living on the island there, seeking employment, you know, tourism is a huge issue. So the ability to work either in a distillery or work in a cafe really ideal for them. Now, I, ha I hadn't had breakfast so because uh, I wanted to hit the road early. So I had sort of a late breakfast, early lunch at the uh, cafe, um, had another bite of haggis there, some potatoes and so forth. Really, really super, 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 uh, really, really good food. Um, but there was a gentleman there who lived on the island, spent all his life living on the island. And I'm just kind of sitting there, minding my own business. There wasn't a whole lot of people there. Um, the foot traffic or tourism was kind of s slow that day. And the gentleman just sort of came up and he asked me if he minded, you know, hey, do you mind if I sit down? I'm like, no, sure. So we spent about a half an hour or so talking to each other. He told me about his life. I would guess the gentleman was probably about, uh, I don't know, late 60s, early 70s. Um, and it was really, really, really cool to talk to someone local, someone who was just super, super, super friendly, uh, and get to know someone from the Isle of Arran. And apparently this is what he liked to do. You know, rather than him traveling around the world, although it did sound like he, from our conversation, he did spend a little bit of time traveling around Europe, um, he can meet people from around the world by just going to the distillery and meeting people there. I just thought it was really, really cool uh, to meet someone like that. All right, so touring the distillery, really, really liked it. Now. The Isle of Arran Distillery has sort of a simple floor plan where everything is laid out, everything's within eyesight, which I think in terms of a small scale distillery uh, really makes sense. You know, they're not having to travel to a bunch of different floors and it's really sort of an open floor plan, which I think is absolutely genius. All right, so uh, here are some photos and video of my tour around the distillery. So before we started our tour, we actually tasted an Aaron 10-year-old. Then after doing the tour, we're in the tasting room 
and we got to taste an 18 year old and then a Macure Moore, which is a peated whiskey. And then we got to choose one uh, of our own choosing. I, I was really surprised by the range and the different uh, um, offerings, bottlings that they have there at the Isle of Aaron Distillery. If you go online and see what's available at your local liquor store, you're gonna see you know, a limited availability. They have a lot more at the distillery than what is uh, widely distributed. So we, we had tasted the 10, the 18 year old, the Macromore, and then the one that I chose was the uh, Harmony. This is the Aaron Harmony Edition very, very, very uh, limited. Spalded at 53.2% alcohol by volume. Comes in this really, really cool gift case. Uh, it looks like an instrument, uh, like, like a cello or something like that. It's bottled at cast strength. There are only like something like around a thousand bottles. I paid for this 95 pounds. You can get these on the secondary market. I've seen them for around 185 pounds. Now, you can see I've already gotten past the shoulder. This has been an absolutely superb whiskey, which uh, really develops and evolves a lot in the glass. In fact, I would say it evolves almost more than probably any other whiskey. Now, I first uh, opened this up, did a neck pour during the live stream on the Whiskey Dick uh, channel. And the first thing I had got off this was it reminded me of like a hard orange candy with a chocolate inside. Now, they use American oak, which I'm, I'm assuming is bourbon, a French oak, and a Spanish oak, which is gonna, probably going to include uh, a sherry cask. It is super complex. I do get a little bit of the sh sherry cask notes, a little dried black fruit notes. But that orange character, that orange citrus character is there, but it's not like fresh oranges. It's more like a dried orange or an orange candy. It's got caramels. There's a nuttiness there. Maybe hazelnuts and walnuts. Some caramel, chocolate, mocha, coffee, a minute amount of saltiness. There's like the interior content of a candy bar, and perhaps a Snickers. All right, on the palate. Mm. Absolutely superb. So at this ABV, you can take us a little bit of water and it, I can take some ice, no problem. In fact, I actually like this on ice. Cool it down a little bit. The intensity of the flavor is not lost. And a silkiness or a glossiness on the palate. It really, really has a nice mouthfeel, mouth coating effect. I get the dried citrus orange, I get raisins, I get figs, I get dates, I get caramels, chocolate, a little bit of mocha, some coffee, vanilla. I, now, I get some, now I'm getting some spice notes, perhaps a little bit of cinnamon. Something that reminds me of you ever get a, a cup of coffee and they shave chocolate on it on it, or maybe you get a coffee mocha and you get the shaved chocolate or something like this. There's something like that on the top of it. Mm. It is sweet. It is on the sweet side, but it also maintains sort of a slight savory character as well. Super long finish. Really, really, really long finish. This is absolutely Phenomenal. Phenomenal. It was really, 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 really difficult to choose a whiskey, uh, which one to take home from the Isle of Arran. There were so many there. It, it's hard to find, you know, hard to, you know, what's your, Eric, what's your favorite distiller that you went into in your last year? It's, it, that's a really, really difficult question. But I would say the Isle of Arran is a place you got to go. <laughs> I know Scotland is, is a challenge for most people to go to, but there is an adventure to going to Isla, to going to Isle of Arran, and to going to Orkney. Beyond the whiskey, beyond the distillery, it, there's a, a, a sense of adventure of going there because these are places that are less traveled by tourists. The whiskeys from these three places are very, very, very unique. The climate, the layout, the the 
topography, the geography and everything is really, really, really unique and it has a really unique history there. So absolutely loved going to the Isle of Erin and kind of wish, I know, I was trying, you know, I'm going in there for two weeks, so I'm trying to do as much as I can. Into, I'm trying to cram pack in as much as I can in that time period, but I would like to spend some more time on Isle of Erin. So, you know, I think in the future, I will continue to go back to uh, Scotland, but once I've gone to a number of distilleries where I feel like I've pretty much seen them all, then I can kind of go back and relax. I go back and revisit places that I've already been to and soak it in, you know, the, the atmosphere uh, a little bit more. And yeah, as you saw there, maybe when it's not rain, raining. Um, my trip in 2018 was superb weather. I had like one day of rain, got a little bit more rain, a little bit more fog, you know, typical Scotland weather there. But anyway, absolutely fantastic. So Am I gonna, what would I score this? I, I'm gonna go at 92, 92 points. Definitely another contender to go into my top 10 for 2019. All right, if you subscribe to this channel, I wanna thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. And until next time, cheers. Hey, if you like my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos.